Hey guys, welcome to Red Balloon Films. Thank you for joining me here for an episode of Animator Discussing Movies. And the movie I want to discuss was what you saw at the beginning. Superman 2025 by James Gunn. Um, the, the beginning somewhat of the new DCU era. Uh, Creature Commandos is obviously going to be the first entry into the DCU. But... Superman 2025 coming out in July 11th, I think, and I, I I cannot wait to see this. Now, we have seen a new image, which is here, of Superman and Crypto chilling out on the moon, taking it easy, and it is a gorgeous image. It really is. But some of the things that we've been hearing uh, from James Gunn that it's it's based off of his own dog, a rescue that he took in, um, just sounds amazing. Even the look of the dog is, seems to be from the original uh, iteration of Crypto within the comics, like a crossbreed. Uh, it looks gorgeous. Um, and I have to say, just even seeing this image where they're looking at the world and obviously the perspective of it, everything seems close and you know we know reality is not actually like that but it looks stunning and um, i've actually put up a video on the channel go check it out it is simply them sitting there with the james gunn video of the earth rotating with the superman theme from the original film and from zack schneider's uh, man of steel two um two songs two two musical themes uh, and scores that are playing with the earth spinning so check that out uh, if you want just a little bit of a, a kind of a nostalgic hit against this image um, but it's gorgeous I absolutely love it um, I want to talk about the Superman 2025 what can we expect from it the cast some of the characters that they're playing uh, and, and of course James Gunn himself this is huge for Gunn I mean he has done some really big things in the past whether it be the Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy with the MCU, whether it be Peacemaker, the series, or the movies, Suicide Squad for uh, DC, um, and even some of the Avenger films, which he had a hand in as well, um, and even like the saga of the Infinity Stones, which um, had a lot to do with James Gunn. There's, he's, he's done a lot. He's um, he's really gone into uh the the film lore of a lot of different films like in guardians of the galaxy but he's he, in guardians of the galaxy he explores not just the comedy and funny side that we see especially in the first film but there's a human side and a dramatic side and an emotional side to those films uh, especially within the third one and and the history and origin of rocket raccoon uh, which before those films i wouldn't have had the foggiest notion of uh, and even just seeing that um is, is unbelievable like what he can do with Groot and uh, baby Groot and teenage Groot what he can do with a raccoon how he can make me feel about a raccoon is just insane so this guy is storytelling uh, on a character level and um, be it dramatic or comedy is it is on another level to what we've seen in the past Um, so I wanted to have a quick chat about that guys All right when we when we're looking at um, the previous film that we've seen, right? We're talking about the Zack Snyder's Man of Steel, right? Huge fan of Man of Steel. I've been defending that film ever since 2013. It is a masterpiece, right? The 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 cinematography in that film, the score in that film from uh, Hans Zimmer, the just the direction of it, the action sequences, the VFX, right? These are all things that are on a completely another level. To anything that we would see in maybe the MCU or in, in other comic book movies, right? I mean, this is up there as one of the best visual comic book movies of all time. The origin story of Krypton, the lore that Zack Snyder and the writers created with the backstory of Krypton, etc. Was spectacular. Now, I have got a video that you can check out regarding Man of Steel and what I thought was great about it. What I thought maybe wasn't so good so please check that out let me know your thoughts however where i think superman 2025 can really kind of overcome um the man of steel is is in the character development right um man of steel as a character superman is in the beginnings everything happens when he becomes superman 
everything just starts to happen within a few hours, right? So the whole film takes place essentially in a very short period of time from the moment he finds this ship in, in the Arctic uh, to the moment Zod arrives, right? So it's only, I think it's only a, like a few passage of time is like a few days. Now, obviously, we get the backstory and him as a kid and, and him as a teenager and, and everything that happened. But the majority of the film takes place within a very isolated time frame. And I think it's because of that we don't really get to see the character. Um, I love the action. It's insane. But there's almost too much action. And the reason I say there's almost too much action is because I do feel like the story and the characters suffer because of that. Like when you take Clark Kent, right, wholesome, all-American, humble, um, all-around nice guy, right? You don't really get to feel his personality. Not saying his character, but you don't really get to see his, feel his personality. I know throughout the entire film he's very somber, he's very stoic. Uh, he does nice things like helping the waitress of course and you know obviously he, he saves like a whole bunch of people i'm not i'm not even going to try and debate the fact that it is um miles better than the original superman for how many people he saves right like i mean he saves i think 40 people um and five of them are lois uh, in the original films i think he saved 10 people and five were lois like 50 percent were lois but in the new film he saves like 40 people, five or lowest. And of course, he saves the world like twice. Once from the, uh, um, the I, I, I don't want to say steam engine. It's not a steam engine. The, the world engine. <laughs> the world engine. And then, of course, from uh, Zod himself um, at the end. So it, it's brilliantly done. But we don't really see his personality, right? Him having fun, enjoying himself, really getting to shine um, as Clark. But even as Superman as well. And that's not to say he has to be running around like a little lunatic smiling all the time, okay? We know he's in grave situations and because of that, he can't really smile all the time. And that's that's my issue, is that he's thrust into these grave situations over and over again, just really quickly, one after another, that we never get to really feel his personality like you would on Smallville, right? Or something like um, even Superman and Lois that I've started to watch recently, which is really, really good. The, the episode one and the introduction to Superman in Superman and Lois is a thing of beauty. If you have not seen it, guys, absolutely check that out. So there's a lot to look forward to in Superman 2025, things that I think James Gunn can do um, that I'm really hoping um, not only will he be able to do it well, that he'll bring heart and personality to the character like no other. Uh, I also feel like looking at the images that we've seen so far, where we've seen uh, um, uh, uh, Corn Sweat as Superman, but also as Clark, where his hair's all bunched up, he's got this kind of puffed face where he's kind of just, I think he's, he's nearly forcing a little bit of an underbite, and obviously the glasses and everything on. He really looks like he's going to exude a different personality with Clark and, and Superman. And I've always wanted to try and iterate that, like Smallville, Clark is not an idiot, right? He's not a bumbling mess. He's not a klutz. He's not goofy, right? Clark is a wholesome, kind, apple pie eating all American, right? And Superman is all of those things, but with like, you know, godlike powers. Now, when he wants to put on a facade of being somewhat clumsy ish, that's fine. But it has to be demonstrated that it is a facade. And that Clark himself, when he's comfortable and he's around friends, that he can act normal, right? So it'll be interesting to see that because the two looks that Dave Cornsweat has put in, they look they look incredible, right? Um, I'm loving the suit so far as I've seen it. The one that we see in the behind-the-scenes footage, that's not that's not a good iteration of the suit. It's just no post as a... Uh, there's no VFX on it. There's no post-production. Uh, so I'm not going by that in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I'm just looking forward to seeing the first kind of images of that suit with like post-production feel to it. It'll be very, very interesting. Um, I just want to bring up um, some images I have here with regards to the cast that we're looking at in um, Superman uh, 2025. Uh, because I want to just have a little talk about the cast and the characters and what, you know, at least what I hope to see and uh, maybe what you guys all hope to see uh, in that. Uh, so I'm just going to throw the 
list of them in here into the window. I think this is uh, an image here that will possibly do the job. Um, and it is not. Bear with me now, guys. I'll have a little look for that later on. Um, so what we can do is just want to talk then to James Gunn. Like we said, this is a really big deal for James Gunn. Uh, he has done some huge films. But being the CEO of the creative side of uh, DC and then being responsible and in charge of not one of, but literally the greatest, biggest, most world-renowned superhero of all time, in which the fandom has been spectacularly divided on. That responsibility is absolutely huge, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do with that. Because like I said, he will do action. Action in Guardians of the Galaxy, brilliant. right? He will do action well. VFX, he'll do that spectacularly as well. Probably with a lot more colour. Um, than Zack Snyder may have done in the past but it's the personality and the characters that I'm really looking forward to seeing like when we think about how amazing the characters are in Guardians of the Galaxy like characters like Yondu and Rocket and Groot and Star-Lord Gamora and then the different relations and interactions and how they play off each other this lends me to believe that the characters in this is going to be fantastic. Everybody's talking about the fact that there's too many characters. And yet they don't realise that all films have about 100 characters. Right? But only 8 to 10 are actually predominant within the movie. And there's only really about 5 stars in, in, in pretty much every film. Right? Even if you look at... And you can name any film. Like Troy. If we look at Troy, it has Brad Pitt. Right? It has Eric Bana. We have Hector. We have Achilles. Okay, but we also have Hector's uh, brothers, Paris, right? Um, and then Paris, they, he has his wife, Helen, well, love interest, Helen of Troy, right? And then we've also got the leaders of the uh, Trojan army, right? These are all main players within that film, right? There's at least seven or eight of them, right? But then, of course, beyond that, right, you have the entire crew that joined with the hammer that, that's fighting with Achilles and his main uh, allies, like the, the right-hand man on his shoulder, <laughs> And lots of the the, the the child, the boy in which he's training, but then dies and leads to Achilles joining the battle. These are all smaller characters, but they have a big impact on the film. That's the kind of thing you can expect from Superman. So when people say there's too many superheroes, there's, it's, it's too convoluted, there's, 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 there's not going to be enough room for Superman to breathe. Every film has 20, 30, 40, 50 characters. They play small roles, and that's what this film, I think, will introduce. Big characters, but in small roles that will be introduced within their own films, doing their own thing. Um, to see the interaction of those characters, like we saw with Guardians of the Galaxy, is going to be amazing. The personality shining through. And I'm just looking forward to seeing anything with regards to the story. What we can expect uh, within the story itself. Like That, to me, that's the crux of not only this film... But the entire DCU, what is the story going to be, right? Now, what is going to be success for this film? Obviously, financial success, but it doesn't need to hit a billion, okay? It just needs to achieve a profit. Once this film achieves a profit, which is, I think, if it makes anything over 600, 650 million, it'll be hitting a profit. So that would be a success. A fresh Rotten Tomato score and a general consensus from critics that it is great, right? All we want is a general consensus that it is good. Beyond that, of course, fandom. The fandom need to stop being so split on this. You're always going to have the Snyderverse madness going on in the background. And I myself am one of Zack Snyder's biggest fans. I love Man of Steel. I love Batman vs Superman. I love the Justice League Zack Snyder's cut. It is a cinematic masterpiece, right? I love Watchmen. 300 is cool. Okay. There are so many Zack Snyder films that I think are gorgeous. The Guardians of Gaul is a picturesque, beautiful film. But the rest of the DCEU is a mess. 
it's not Zack Snyder's fault that it was a mess. It was the DC executives who were chopping and changing what they wanted, who absolutely butchered Batman vs Superman, absolutely butchered the Justice League, and then they just created an absolute mess of tonality between Shazam and then Black Adam and then what, what the Suicide Squad was meant to be and ended up being, um, and it was just an absolute nightmare. Like, And, and it just became... And directors were coming and going. It was a mess. And it was generally just Warner Brothers' fault. DC is now its own studio. It is helmed by somebody who had nothing to do with any of that nonsense. Considering that, every person who loves Zack Snyder should be on board with the DCU and hope for great DC properties and a great cinematic universe. Because Zack Snyder's looking forward to it. And that's where you should come over. That would be success. Bringing the fandom together somewhat to love this property. right? Because the people making the DCU have nothing to do with the Warner Brothers executives that were in the Zack Snyder era. And caused what that was. Which was a train wreck by the end of it. right? You can't, you can't even try to say otherwise. So, what is success? 650 million box office worldwide. Or above. A fresh Rotten Tomato score with a general consensus from critics that it is a great movie. And then somewhat healing the Superman and DC fan base and, and trying to bring them back together again. That ultimately, for me, will be a success for this film. Guys, please like, subscribe. Um, this channel is about making cartoons and it is about talking about movies. And I want to try and build a community where we can interact with each other. I'll answer any of your questions. We'll do live streams when we have enough people watching uh, live. I would just love for people to like, subscribe and contribute. Really help grow the channel and get in right now at the, the kind of the ground level. It'd be fantastic. Um, there's a lot to come with the DCU. There's a lot to come with the MCU. There's a lot to come with movies in general. And I just want uh, to basically go on that journey with you guys. Right? Not only will we have these movie chats, which I'm doing now, but we make cartoons. That's predominantly what we're trying to do. And we're going to look for, look at trying to put out one episode of Little Bastards. You can see it up there. Every month. We just released a Halloween special episode. Please check it out. You can see it here at the end of the video. Just click on that. Watch that video. It is awesome. A lot, a lot of blood, sweat and tears went into that film. Not my blood, but if you watch it. You will see all the blood, right? But a lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into that uh, cartoon. Please check it out. Love if you would, if you like it and comment on it and let us know your thoughts. Again, new episodes of Little Bastards every month. But also, I'll be doing trailer reactions. And we will be doing reactions to short 3D and 2D animated films and talking about them. Right? I'm going to be bringing up other YouTube videos and other cartoons and movies. And just having a chat about those over the course of 10 or 15 minutes. Maybe I'll bring something to your attention that you were not aware of. Um, and you may think is really, really cool. So, guys, talk to you soon. Thank you so much uh, for joining me here for, for, for this video. Um, I'm going to have a lot more coming your way. Really do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Um, thank you so much for everything. Going to hit 1,000 subscribers before the end of the year. And that is our target done. But then we'll have a new target. 5,000 subscribers by 2026. That is the aim. 5,000 subscribers by 2026. So please, let's see if we can do that together. Have a great day, guys. And I will chat to you in the next video. <laughs>